Well, I think today is going to be a beautiful day. It's expected to get up into the 60s again today. And I think we're gonna be able to get some gardening done. I'm pretty stoked about that. I love a day in the garden. It's such great therapy. Hey ducks, where are you going? Back to the water? You know, you can stay and garden a little bit for me. Eat some of these weeds. I don't even mind if you eat some radishes too. So as you can see in this bed here, I've been dumping the quail waste from underneath the quail cages. So I just sprinkle it down the center of the bed and let that compost through the winter. You see it gets fresher looking. I'm almost done with this bed. I'll finish out this one and then I will do that to the next bed. I still have to mulch this sugarcane bed and do something about this creeping Charlie that has taken over my asparagus along with the blackberries. Oh, this is a mess. This is gonna be hard to contain as Creeping Charlie has no self-control and neither do blackberries. I think we're actually probably just going to remove this blackberry stand from existence. And I hate to do that because I love the blackberries, but we have them growing. I mean, there's more down there in the pond. So if we just keep this passageway open and just remove them right here, I'm actually thinking we might plant our sunchokes in there around that elderberry. What was that? Oh, you say so, huh? Well, well folks, I think I have some bad news about Rosemary. Last, last night she started hollering like this. And no, she is not in labor. There is no other. Her ligaments are firm as ever. She is calling for a mate. She is in heat. I have no idea how her stomach could be so huge and not be pregnant. But it appears she has fooled us once again. Oh, Rosemary, what am I going to do with you? Tom, instead of eating out of that bucket, could you come over here and clean up this mess? Because apparently it's Rose's day to be clumsy. I'm spilling food everywhere. I spilled food here when I was mixing up the grain. I spilled food here when I was getting it out. Go on, clean up the spilt grain, not the good grain for the goats. I'm gonna have to take that away from you, ain't I? Silly turkey. There you go. Keep cleaning. What are you, camera shy? I turn on the camera and you stop eating. how many of these weeds I can get out of this asparagus bed. Some good garden therapy for my winter garden. I got the first bed first step done first step is removing all the old dead asparagus branches some of them had to be cut but most of them just broke off at the ground because they were already starting to break down so just remove those as I went I pulled any of the cedar I think it's called it's a weed that we have in here it's a very woody weed um, it's one that we have all over the property that's 
pretty prolific and seeds a lot. So they also seem to grow back from the roots if I leave the roots. So I had to pull those out instead of cutting them off. And the blackberry that I met up with at the back, I also pulled out. You want to remove as much of the blackberry root as possible or they will regrow from the root. So I'll probably have some blackberries popping up next year in the spring. Um, I brought the blackberry to the goats. Blackberry leaves are great nutrition, so the goats are thoroughly enjoying that now. So now the next step is to get some of these short, low-growing weeds. I'm not too worried about some of these because they are winter annuals and they're gonna die back on, on their own. But when I get down here, this is creeping Charlie. This will not die. This will take over. It'll spread into this bed. We actually already cleared it out of this bed. It runs by runners. So I'm gonna start pulling on runners and trying to get as much of it removed without breaking the branches as I go. My, my hands and back are hurting. So I got this pile and that pile. I'm gonna get those taken off and hopefully have time to mulch the garden so that they don't regrow. And I don't know that I'm gonna get any work done on the next two, but we'll see how much energy I can muster. Winter is a great time to garden. It's a great time to get things done, like pulling massive weeds that have become invasive, putting down hot manures in the beds so that they'll have time to decompose and feed the soil applying mulch to beds that need it and many many other things if you're looking into starting a new garden bed i highly recommend you get some black plastic down on the area that you want to do it to kill any of the weeds and seeds that may be in that area and then go ahead and start adding in organic material, whether it's leaves, straw, anything you can get your hands on that can break down into the soil and feed the soil with organic matter will make it so that when you go to plant in the spring, you're gonna have a beautiful beds. Now I highly recommend raised beds as a first choice. So if you have the ability to buy the materials for a raised bed and fill it with soil, that is the first number one thing I always recommend anybody. It's what I've done for years on my professional jobs and it's what I would be doing here if I had the materials to build the raised beds. All that weeding is why I wish I had a flame weeder. Bending over, my back hurts, I have four herniated discs, degenerative disc disease, and my vertebrae where the sciatic nerve comes out at is actually crumbled into a billion pieces. So for me, being on my hands and knees like that is not fun. Also, the arthritis in my hands from my Hashimoto's autoimmune disease has made it so that pulling weeds like that is torture to my hands. So I'm gonna have to take extra turmeric, take a nice Epsom salt bath tonight and recover from just that little bit of work because my body is not what it used to be. <laughs> I would love one of those flame weeders that people keep showing me in their videos where they just zoop and it's done. It's done in five minutes and they didn't hurt their back or their hands. <laughs> I would love one of those. Hmm, maybe Santa will bring me one. Sometimes I feel like winter gardening is actually the best time of year to garden. Not just because of the cooler temperatures, living in the south, it's kind of hard to garden in the summer, but because there's so much that you can improve during the time where the plants are sleeping. Most of the plants are sleeping anyway. And you can make things better along the way. I'm fortunate that I've been gardening for 40 years. I grew up in a gardening family where we grew all our own food and produce. And then the past 20 years, I've been a professional horticulturist. I've worked in the industry the entire time and I've stayed well educated going to many conferences and workshops and seminars to make sure that I stayed on top of the most current horticulture information. So something that you should consider doing during this time 
of winter and when the plants are sleeping and you have a chance and you have time is to further educate yourself, whether that be through watching YouTube videos, taking an online class, or going to some local workshops in your area. All of these things will greatly improve your education and therefore your ability to garden. One of the great ones that I did was the permaculture certification through Oregon State University. It's available for anybody else just to get on there and just further your education into permaculture and how it works. There are also many avenues on YouTube that you can take. I would love to make more gardening videos for you guys. If you have specific topics that you would like going into the gardening season in the spring, just leave them all in the comments down below so I can start planning out those videos and getting them out for you. I've been a master gardener for the last 15 years. Like I said, I've been gardening my whole life. Um, and I've pretty much, there's not anything I haven't grown yet, unless it's too tropical to grow here. And even then, I've tested the boundaries on things that I can grow in this climate. What I might lack in resources to be able to afford fancy gardening materials, but I make up for it with my knowledge and ability to accurately educate you guys. So no matter where you are on your gardening journey, don't hesitate to ask questions and learn more about gardening and definitely take advantage of these winter hours to do so thank you guys for watching please like share comment down below subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you next time on wholesome roots